Well, St. Harris's work spans four decades, beginning with his Guyana Quartet in the early 60s and culminating in The Ghost of Memory, his last novel, which was published in 2006. Now, since the Harris canon comprises 20 plus novels, a number of poems, and an important collection of his essays on post-colonial literary criticism, one cannot hope, in the space of an hour or two, to do much more than offer you a tantalizing taste. As a post-colonial writer and critic, Harris was way ahead of his time. Even in his earliest essays and talks on literature, he was pointing out that if West Indian writing was to truly offer an alternative perspective, then it needed not only to take the West Indian life and landscape as its subject matter, but must break away from the very forms of novel writing imported from Europe. Dubbing the realistic novel the novel of persuasion, he dissected its techniques, exposing the inherent control and domination exerted by novelist over reader. The linear plot would not do for a vision that was going to reimagine the past, challenging the myth-making of the West. So in Harris's work, we can expect to find a revolution in the form of the novel. He dispenses with the linear format. He dispenses with a clear outline of individual character. He exposes the instability in the very words we use. This playing with time, with the notion of individuality, and with our belief in the fixity of language is all consistent with his attack on the architecture of history, the narrative that the West has constructed in support of its assumed right to domination. Harris uses a variety of images to suggest that the models of conquest, that is of hunter and hunted, need to be shattered. An important image is what he calls the Copernican Revolution, a revisioning of everything from a perspective robbed of its certainties. The sun, in Harris's work, no longer goes around the world. Before we move into the novels and the themes that Harris repeatedly explores, let's listen as Mark reads a comment from Brendan de Carey's. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Harris is a distinguished post-colonial critic, and it is hard to read his fiction without relating it to the groundbreaking essays and lecture, lectures he has produced over the years. His criticism has often intuited the gist of new critical movements long before they, came, uh, long before they came fashion, became fashionable. He condemned imperialist realism before Edward Said. He worked out a sort of deconstruction before Jacques Derrida. And he even seems to have practiced new historicism before Stephen Greenblatt. At his best, he is masterly at dismantling pretensions to absolute truth. Like Europe's record of its colonial expansion, and exposing cultural certainties as partial fictions, strands in a much greater, grander tapestry than we have usually been taught. Harris has tried to widen the scope of Caribbean imagination, to show how African or pre-Columbian art and mythology can hold as much significance for us as our much better known cultural legacies from Europe. But cultures do not connect schematically. You must be prepared to set aside multiculturality, which is an umbrella of tolerance over many different cultures, for cross-culturality, 
an altogether harder undertaking, which begins with the conviction that cultures are partial in themselves. And so Harris has let his critical instincts follow wherever curious resemblances have led him, often with remarkable results. Building on the work of the anthropologist Walter Roth, for example, Harris teased out the implications of a reverse transubstantiation as practiced by Carib warriors, a ritual in which the cannibalized bodies of the Spanish conquistadors were turned into bone flutes. The affinities to and fascinating differences from the Christianity that supposedly civilized these warriors is obvious once you have made the connection.